So, after several months of restrictions, uncertainty, and unfortunately, the loss of thousands of lives, vaccines for the COVID-19 have finally been created, with some success. The fascinating aspect of these proposed COVID-19 vaccines, such as those created by Moderna and Pfizer, are that they are RNA vaccines. To understand these RNA vaccines, we first need to understand the structure of the SARS-CoV-2 virus. SARS-CoV-2 is an envelope virus with a diameter of roughly 0.1 microns. On the exterior of the viral particle we have spike proteins, known as the S protein, which has high affinity for ACE2, an enzyme attached to the exterior of cells located in the lungs, heart and kidneys. This S-ACE2 binding plays a vital role in the process of virus invasion into our cells. In the interior of the viral particle we have the viral RNA. The virus is genetic material which contains instructions for making viral proteins such as the virus's spike or S protein. Once the virus enters into our cells, this genetic material is released. Viral proteins are made using our cellular machinery and ultimately new SARS-CoV-2 viral particles will bud off from the cell and infect other cells. So what are RNA vaccines? Several proposed vaccines for COVID-19 are RNA vaccines. They can be based on two different types of RNA. We have the mRNA vaccines created by Moderna, Pfizer-BioNTech and CureVac and the SARNA vaccines created by Imperial College and Arcturus. The structures of messenger RNA and self-amplifying RNA are similar but have a key difference. As the diagram shows, the SARNA has an extra piece of code which codes for a viral replicase enzyme. Once the SARNA enters our cells upon receiving the vaccine shot, this enzyme helps make multiple copies of viral RNA and thus the SARNA vaccine as opposed to the mRNA vaccines can be given in smaller doses to patients. As you can see from the diagram, scientists have isolated the part of this viral genetic code that contains the instructions for making the virus's spike protein and uses this information to create the synthetic RNA molecules mentioned above. Now, these synthetic mRNA and saRNA molecules are packed into lipid nanoparticles. In layman's terms, these are small fat droplets. This stops our body's enzymes breaking down the RNA molecules and also increases the efficiency of the cellular uptake of these RNA molecules. Once a synthetic RNA enters one of our cells, the cell reads the instructions encoded by the RNA to produce the virus spike protein. This is key as this production then allows our cells to present this antigen to our immune cells, such as CD4 positive T cells, a specific type of T cell. These cells can then release specific chemical messengers known as cytokines. In this case, it's Th2 cytokines. Th2 cytokines facilitate the differentiation and activation of B cells. The activated B cells can produce antigen neutralizing antibodies, which basically means that upon viral particles entering our system, these antibodies can neutralize them. CDD4 positive T cells can also release Th1 cytokines, activating CD8 positive T cells. CD8 positive T cells have the ability to attack infected cells by recognizing our infected cells that present the specific SARS CoV 2 antigen spike protein. Okay, so ultimately, the aim of this vaccine is to prime the body so that when an individual is exposed to the disease-causing organism, the immune system is able to respond rapidly and at a high activity level, thereby destroying the pathogen before it causes disease and also reduces the risk of spread to other people. Okay, in the next video I will be discussing the benefits, challenges and safety concerns surrounding these RNA vaccines and whether or not they actually work, according to the limited clinical trial results we have to date. As always, please like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.